don't couch surf. That is the worst travel advice that I have ever received. And today I'm going to tell you why that is. Couchsurfing is a cultural exchange platform and one that I have used a lot in many different countries now. And it's a platform where you can stay with locals and stay in their home overnight. And also you can meet up with locals using their hangouts feature and events. Sadly, I've been warned many times that it's a hookup app, I might get killed, that it's strange to stay in a stranger's home without paying and that they must want something in return. But that's far from the truth if you use couch surfing properly. I was a guest with a family in Spain and within 24 hours they invited me to join their caravan holiday in Cordoba. I've also hosted a couch surfer before where we cycled over 50 kilometers to his family's bee farm. So I've had my fair share of adventures using this app and I've never felt uncomfortable. I have taken many precautions though to make sure that I don't feel that way. Of course, like meeting anyone online, there are dangers that come with that. So today I'm going to show you how to set up your profile safely, what you should include and how to contact hosts. When you set up your couch surfing profile, make sure that you've got recent photos of yourself and also that you write a bit about yourself, why you're on couch surfing, what your interests are. Before you send a message to a potential host, you need to make sure that you feel comfortable staying with them and that they are who they say they are. So there are many ways that you can do this. The most important is to check their references. So references are left for both the guest and the host at the end of a stay and they're really, really important. I would say to really read between the lines because people rarely leave negative reviews um, if they've stayed with someone unless it was very terrible experience usually they would just leave sort of neutral reviews if a reference is only maybe a line and not very enthusiastic you can sort of guess that that person maybe didn't have the best time or might have felt slightly uncomfortable so I would really look for reviews that are enthusiastic and at least a few lines long if not paragraphs where they've really gone into detail about their experience I would also check that the host has references from both men and women. Check that the host that you'd like to stay with has recent images and a lot of information about themselves and their interests. Be wary of trusting verified accounts. So in the past, to verify yourself on couch surfing, you would just verify your address of where you live and also you could pay a one-off fee and get verified that way. So the verification tick means very little these days. I wouldn't use that as much to gauge how trustworthy the host is. To stay with a couch surfer, you then have to send them a request. And I would recommend to request for two or three nights. Uh, I wouldn't say to request for much more, but obviously if you do get on really well with your host, then often they will invite you to stay for longer and you might stay for a week, sometimes more. And in your request, you should really reference the host that you're staying with. Show that you actually have read the host's profile and not that you're copying and pasting from, you know, lots of different messages. And say why you want to meet them in particular and why you're in their town and, you know, what you would like to do with them. You can then tell them a bit about yourself, message them beforehand so that you have some sort of idea about what they're like as a person and try to arrive during the day if possible rather than at night. My next tip is to have a backup plan. So check nearby if there are hostels that you can stay in or even just a bar that's open late so that if you feel uncomfortable, you've got somewhere safe to go to make your next arrangements for where to stay. If you do have a gut feeling that you don't feel comfortable in this person's home, just politely say to them that you can't stay overnight and thank them and leave. Don't hesitate. Don't, don't feel bad because if that's your gut feeling and you don't feel comfortable, it's unlikely to get much better and you don't want things to get worse. Next is to inform a close friend or family uh, that you trust and give them the address of where you're staying and the name of the person that you're staying with. One downside to couch surfing is the way that they've handled their company. During the pandemic, couch surfing all of a sudden forced users to pay a monthly fee of around $2.40 per month and everyone was locked out of their accounts and people were really angry because they weren't given any notice and they were forced to do this even if they were also a host they still had to pay 
While some people say they wouldn't mind paying for the service on a monthly basis, they would have liked a say in the matter um, and just think that the way Couchsurfing handled it was not great. There are now other alternatives and the main ones being Trust Roots and Be Welcome. And they're not platforms that I've used yet, but I am considering it. And there's also a Facebook group called Host a Sister, which is for women. And I think that the tips that I've given today should apply for all of these websites and platforms. And I hope that this video has encouraged you to try staying with a stranger overnight and seeing what incredible adventures you might have, the conversations you might have, the places that they might tell you to visit that you would never have heard of before. And I will see you in next week's video.